Oh, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah? How much are you hoping to get? <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> that's not really how these work. <laughs> Hello filmmakers, Ash here, and welcome to Film It Yourself. Recently, I applied for my first ever film grant, and I realized film grant applications are an art of their own that most indie filmmakers don't necessarily know a lot about. So I figured I'd share with you everything I learned during this extremely time-consuming process so you can ace your application and get funding for your film. First off, if you didn't already know, film grants are small or large amounts of money various companies and organizations offer filmmakers to help them either produce or finish their films. Nowadays, you can find a film grant for almost anything. There's grants for filmmakers of color, women filmmakers, documentaries, films centered around important social and world issues, and sometimes there's even film grants if you're willing to do a little bit of product placement. If you're looking for film grants, check out the Film Daily link in the description below with a great list of various grants depending on what type of film you're making. Also, try doing Google searches specific to the type of film grants that might fit your film, such as Asian American filmmaker grants or environmental film grants, to see what else is out there. Recently, I applied to the Women in Film Shorts Lab, which is a partnership Women in Film is doing with Google, where three filmmaking teams will be given a grant of $30,000 to make their short film. Because it's funded by Google, this film grant does require product placement. But a screenwriter friend of mine happened to already have a script that fit perfectly, called May I Put You on Hold. I'll let you guess what product placement we did. So, I'm going to walk you through what I submitted for this film. However, different grants might require different things, but for the most part, these basic elements will be needed to apply. First up was the finished draft of the script. Companies and organizations want to make sure you actually have a project to make with that money, and that it's good before they put their name on it by funding it. So make sure you have a solid script that's completely polished, and one that fits specifically for that grant. For example, May I Put You on Hold is a short film about a woman who accidentally gets transferred into purgatory while on hold with customer service for a Swedish furniture store. So the product placement of a Google Pixel phone fit perfectly. Second, and also super important, is your personal statement. This most likely will be a requirement for any grant you submit to, and it's basically your chance to express why you need this grant money, why your film is the right choice for the grant money, and why your film is so important that it needs to be made. Now, the keyword here is money. <laughs> You're convincing them to give you a lot of money, so your argument here needs to be very, very strong. For the Women in Film Shorts Lab, I knew that hiring other women filmmakers would be key, as they are an organization that loves to support women and non-binary crew members. So I made sure to express how important hiring other women and non-binary crew members was to me, and that I even plan to hire other Women in Film members if possible. Third is a budget. Once again, you're convincing people to give you money, so they want to know where the money will go and exactly what you'll be spending it on. Some grants might only require you to do a top sheet budget, which just gives an estimate for each department, but I encourage you to expand on that if possible and try to give as detailed of a budget as you can. Obviously, budgets can change during pre-production, but the clearer you can be about how you'll be spending the money, the more likely they'll be to give it to you. And by the way, I'm using the free budget you can download from studiobinder.com here because it included a top sheet. I'll put a link to it in the description below, but you can also get my personal budget template and all of my other filmmaking templates by supporting me on Patreon for just $5 a month. All right, enough Patreon talk, back to film grants. Fourth is a cast and crew list, and this is really a nice to have and not a need to have, as you might not already have your film casted or your crew assembled. If you do though, it's great to show them who will be working on the project and give a brief bio for each with any impressive and noteworthy projects they've worked on. 
For example, Ryan, the screenwriter for May I Put You on Hold, is also the showrunner's assistant for the HBO show The Flight Attendant. This signals to the grant givers that he knows the film and TV business, and is legit. Fifth is work examples. These are various links to various other films you and other cast and crew members have made that are good examples of your work. While this is optional sometimes, I'm going to say it's something you should definitely find a way to include, even if they don't ask for it, as it proves that you're capable of handling a film shoot and can deliver a solid final product. Again, they are giving you money, so you want to do everything in your power to convince them to do so. For my film grant, I included samples of not only my work, but the various cast and crew members too, to show the variety of our work and how we all have several years of experience making films. And finally, six is a lookbook. Again, this is optional, but a really great tool to help the grant giver see your vision for the film. This is really the chef's kiss of your grant application. That little something on top that can be the difference between them choosing you over someone else. Showing that you have a strong visual look and style for the film through example images from other films or just Google searches is the best visual tool in your tool belt. And pro tip, if your entire application looks like it matches the look and feel of your film's lookbook, even better! You could even go the extra mile like I did and design a poster for your film that matches the lookbook and put it at the front of your application to tie it all together. And finally, one last pro tip, spend time on your application. Don't just rush through making it so you can be the first to submit, though I will admit not being the last has its benefits. For example, I spent almost 13 hours on my application and yes, I'm a weirdo and track all my time. Grant givers can tell that you spent time on your application, so take the time to make sure your application is perfect. Send it to a trusted friend and family to get their feedback and polish, polish, polish. All of that work can earn you a lot of brownie points. So that's it. With all these tips, your application is sure to impress. And hey, if you don't get the first grant, don't give up. After all, you already did most of the hard work and you can always tweak your application for future submissions. Now, go enjoy those brownie points. Mmm, brownies. Oh, and if you're still here, don't forget to like and subscribe because that totally helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and let's be like YouTube buddies, okay? So say hi in the comments as well. Until next time, go film it yourself.